Welcome back. I want to talk about Columbus. Yep. Uh, so Columbus has been in the news this week, of course, because they added to their blue line. Now, this was a team that did need help on the blue line. They also didn't have great goaltending this year. They had problems scoring. Their goals for was 30th in the NHL. Their goals against was 31st. So whatever they can do to improve that is great. For Yarmo Kekalainen, I think the patience that the franchise has had, well, the management's had with his work, it, it might be starting to wane a little bit. It, it feels like it, at least from these moves. Like, he may feel a pressure to improve this team for next year. And I think the goal is to get Columbus to at least in contention for a wild card spot next year. I don't know if they're there. I don't know if they're there. But let's go through this. So, uh, when we look at this franchise's history... They've never been higher than third in their division, meaning they haven't had home ice advantage when they have made the playoffs. That does make it a little more difficult, right? Uh, they've never got past round two. Uh, they hadn't really got past round one until 2019. So uh, this is a team that has had its struggles and its first 15 years in the league kind of just unremarkable. Um, they're a team that doesn't generate a ton of uh, emotional investment because they really haven't gone on a run. Uh, they haven't had, like, their team identity, it feels like, has always been a little bit murky, too. So, they've also had three straight losing seasons, so this is definitely not, you know, something that can continue. Uh, and they've been eighth in their division two of the last three seasons. That third season back, of course, being the Central Division when we had just the divisional play. But either way, Columbus has had problems. Uh, Columbus has had trouble in a lot of areas. Now, injuries definitely don't help. They had a franchise record 563 man games lost this past season. It was a rough one, right? They had 120 points from rookies, which is a team record, in part because rookies were put into, into the lineup, maybe before they were ready because there were so many veterans that were hurt. Uh, 47 players were used. That is a team record. So with all of the players that have come in to this lineup, it is hard to project who's going to be where next year. So I went through cap friendly and just used their their depth chart projection for next year. Uh, they have Goudreau, Jenner, and Line on the first line. I still think the number one issue that Columbus has, and I think Columbus fans will agree, they need a true number one center in between Goudreau and Line. As much as I also need Line need Line to stay healthy. So Goudreau's point total dropped to 74 this year. But by Columbus standards, that's pretty good. Columbus is not a team that's been as freewheeling in their history of scorers. Uh, as the Calgary Flames have been, right? So seeing Goudreau's production drop, and again, all summer last year, there was at no point any conversation I had where I said, oh yeah, no, Goudreau's point totals will stay the same in Columbus. Even though I had thought Columbus could make the playoffs last year, which again, they didn't get anywhere close, I still didn't think Goudreau's numbers would stay the same. Uh, Johnny Goudreau can be an important player even when he's not getting the points. Um, and I thought this year he was acceptable. Is the cap hit too high? Maybe a little bit for his production. But again, I think they need a true center to play down the middle with him. Now, this is going to mean that with the, the, the reality being Elias Lindholm may want out of Calgary, there, there might be a deal to be done there, except that where Columbus would be looking to deal would be now they've got all these extra defensemen. And I don't know that Calgary needs defensemen either. So it might be tough to make a trade work if they were going to try to pry Lindholm out of Calgary without giving something back from their forward group. And I don't know which players Calgary would be interested in. So then we get into the rest of their, their projected top nine, right? You've got Kent Johnson, who had a good rookie season. Jack Roslovic, who's been up and down. I would not be surprised to see Roslovic included in a deal uh, to, to, to improve their forward depth. Marchenko was excellent from a goal-scoring perspective. Yeah, he only had the four assists, but I don't know that he had a lot of options for passing it in, in, at the NHL level this year. I think it was basically a, I'll take the shot. And he had a lot of luck, too. Uh, just a lot of those pucks went in, and we'll see if he can score at that same rate next year. Uh, Liam Foody is listed as being top nine. I even went through multiple uh, depth charts and seeing that, because Liam Foody's a player that I've liked. I think he's a decent top nine option, but... I know that he hasn't excelled in the NHL. Uh, it would be nice to see him get a chance. Now, Cole Sillinger could help to alleviate some of the issues this team has down the middle by having a bounce-back season. He's very young. He's absolutely capable of a bounce-back season. But is he going to be a 15-goal scorer at the NHL level? 
is there potentially more there? And that's a question mark that I, I think Kakalainen would be hoping would be a positive, right? Uh, if you could have 20 goal seasons from Jenner, Roslovic, and Selinger, all three down the middle, you're in okay shape. But again, you're going to need some some good luck and some good health to have that happen. And Emil Bemstrom. Uh, Bemstrom, I thought, had a decent bounce back this year from a really, really rough year last year. Played well in the AHL, and really, I, I think Bemstrom is young enough to bounce back as well. So then, on the blue line, the top four likely is Zach Wierenski, who missed almost the entire season. That had a negative impact on Columbus. Uh, Damon Severson probably gets on that top pair, but you got Provorov and probably Yurchek, right? Now, I say probably Yurchek, but it's possible Yurchek ends up on the third pairing, and one of these many names down here ends up being the guy who gets that, that top four spot. So you have Jake Bean, who was hurt. Adam Boquist, who has been very inconsistent. Boquist might end up being a guy who gets moved. Eric Goodbranson, it's an expensive contract, but I would think that next year he's probably on the third pairing. Andrew Peak, solid young defenseman. Is there room for him to play top four in Columbus, or might he end up somewhere else? Uh, Nick Blankenberg. Fans like Blankenberg a lot. Uh, he does get hurt, though, and so that's something to keep keep in mind. Uh, Blankenberg might end up being the seventh. Maybe he does end up in the top six. Tim Burney, I thought, played okay. Um, again, due to injuries, he played way more than I think they would have expected. Same with Marcus Bjork. Uh, Jacob Christens Christensen, uh, Billy Sweezy, and Samuel Nazco all got time on that blue line as well. So there's a lot of names here, right? And basically, it's a matter of, can Columbus put together a top six that will help to fix that 31st and goals against? And of course, you're also going to need better goaltending behind that defense. And the goaltender is still, at this point, Elvis Merzlikens. That contract would not be easy to trade if they were trying to move it. And I, I, I don't know. I think for Columbus, they're probably going to cross their fingers and hope for a bounce-back season from Elvis. Uh, and, and again, after two kind of rough years for him, we'll see if he can bounce back. Uh, but there are some goalies available on the market. I don't know if Columbus is going to be able to pull off a deal like that. Again, they can throw in defensemen. They can absolutely throw in a couple of good, decent defensemen, or at least depth defensemen, but we'll see. Now, if you're looking at the upcoming prospects and ones that might make the team, I, I did notice that their prospect list, when you look at the top guys, there's a lot of good young defensemen there. Starting off with Denton Matejic, who was the captain for the Moose Jaw Warriors this past season. Uh, number 12 draft pick last year. Uh, Stanislav Svozil. Svozil came up, and after the WHL playoffs were done, he came up, his WHL playoffs were done anyways, came up and he played for Columbus. And he did all right. I mean, his, his plus minus in the few games was rough, but he's a young defenseman. That happens. And so he might end up carving out a spot for himself, although in likelihood he probably ends up in the minors. I would think the additions of Severson and Provorov means some of these young guys end up spending a little more time in the minors than they might have wanted. Um, then you got Corson Kuhlmans. Uh, he projects to be a pretty solid NHL defenseman. And if you're looking for a forward, center Hunter McCowan, who was signed out of the NCAA in March, uh, fit in okay with Columbus. But how much upside is there? Can he be a top guy? Uh, is he a fourth-line center? This kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of question marks there. They also, of course, have the number three pick in this year's draft. If they drafted Leo Carlson, does Leo Carlson make the team right away? Could Carlson be that center that ends up fixing the issue where they need that top center, right? Uh, it's part of the reason why last night they would have been hanging out with Will Smith and talking to him. Will Smith seen as a possible top five draft pick. He's a center as well, dynamic player. And they're, this is a very good draft. So it's possible that whoever they get at number three, if they draft a center, and they should, there's a lot of good centers invol involved. It's not like... They wouldn't be the best player available in all likelihood anyways. Um, where where I go, kind of go crazy is when they draft somebody who's not really on the draft boards because they need that position. Where it's like, but that's not the best player available. And those are usually the picks that we look back on 20 years down the road and say, what were they thinking? Um, and I also wanted to throw up here, and he's not considered one of their top prospects, but James Malatesta looked good at the Memorial Cup. He's a prospect for Columbus. Maybe he gets himself into the lineup or at least gets a few games uh, before being demoted. But there's there's some fascinating names here for Columbus. Again, the cap space this summer is not a lot. They have less than $6 million. If they could clear some of that out, 
I like I, I can't see them buying out Good Branson. That's the one that to me seems kind of obvious, but isn't there like three years left in his deal? So if you buy him out, that's a six year penalty if you buy out Good Branson. So I can't see that, and yet it might help them a little bit in terms of adding depth down the middle. I don't think Columbus is as bad as the record was this past season. I think they can be better. I think the the slow start and then the injuries hit, and I think that was just a perfect storm for them. Uh, and again, getting Warensky back and being healthy should be a huge difference maker. But I, I'm okay with the additions on the blue line because they could afford to spend that money on Severson. They could afford to pick up Provorov's contract. But it, it does make me wonder what else is going to happen. What else does uh, what else does Yarmo have up his sleeve? Uh, it's going to be a very interesting summer, I think, for Columbus. Uh, while I've talked a lot about how interesting it's going to be for Winnipeg, it's going to be one strange one for Columbus, too. Again, uh, with Columbus and their lack of postseason success and being stuck as a mediocre team as often as they have, they're kind of an easy team to overlook when you're looking at the East. But they have made the playoffs not that long ago. It's just a matter of finding the right formula, the right coaching strategies. And again, I think if if they avoid another franchise record for man games lost, and if they can figure out who to put between Goudreau and Line that will work full time, I think they're in okay shape. Uh, th- though the goaltending question mark, I think, is still there. But let me know your thoughts. What does... Columbus need to do from here in order to really and truly join the playoff hunt in the East? Or are they still a ways away? Do you see these moves potentially as a mistake? Good trades, bad trades? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.